think I always thought that math was really fun, and I always enjoyed uh, thinking about it. It's really a uh, pleasurable uh, profession. You get to think about a lot of interesting things all the time. And I think as soon as I realized this, um, I wanted to do it. Well, I was very influenced. Um, I think I first decided I really wanted to be a mathematician when I went to Hungary for the Budapest Semesters in Math program. Um, a lot of people there are really uh, supportive of mathematics and mathematicians, as in France, actually. So I find that in France, people are very, they think it's cool that you're a mathematician, whereas it might not be so true everywhere else. <laughs> I think French people love uh, intellectuals and thinking about things for fun. Um, I, I was very influenced by my advisor who did a lot of geometric stuff and I was um, always enjoyed trying to visualize the things that he was trying to visualize. And I, um, uh, also when I was very young I liked to do puzzles and things like that so I think that really influenced me. Mainly I think I was influenced by the math itself to be honest. Well, that's a good question. I'm, I might have never really decided that. <laughs> Maybe I just became a mathematician and then one day I was like, oh wow, I seem to actually be a mathematician. Um, I just did what I like to do. I like to, um, I'm also very influenced by my colleagues and so uh, I enjoy working with them so much and talking about math with people so much that I just kept doing it and then one day I was actually a mathematician. I'm not sure it was really ever a conscious decision. Well, I remember very distinctly um, in school, I was in this group, and I don't know how I got to be in this group, where we would leave the classroom and we would go work on little problems and puzzles together in groups. And I really liked that. And, um, I even, it's interesting that I still remember it because I think I was pretty young when I did that. So we'd all have to, they'd give us some like problem or challenge to do and we had to work on it together or we would get in groups. So it would be like maybe six of us all trying to figure out some like building 3D puzzle or some block thing. I mean, it wasn't very difficult, but it was something that we had to all figure out together. And it was really fun and I still, I, actually doing math is a lot like that. <laughs> You're usually working in a group and you're trying to figure something out and you usually don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. But it's the process of doing it is really fun and it's sort of like the process that's uh, ultimately what's important. So I remember that process uh, from when I was maybe in like second grade or something and I, um, I loved it then. Um, and it's actually not that dissimilar from what I do now when I'm working with a group of people trying to figure out some problem or figure out that that's not the problem we want to be working on. We actually want to work on something else. It's this, uh, this collaborative effort is what I remember and that's mostly the part of math that I like today is the collaboration. I like working by myself and thinking for a long time quietly, but I also really like the collaboration and I feel like that's often not emphasized enough in mathematics because it's so... It's so productive, for one thing, it's a really efficient way to do a lot of things, and it's also really fun. Okay, so right now I'm focusing on an aspect of geometric group theory that's really related to three manifolds. So when I was a, uh, a graduate student, I was studying three manifolds and hyperbolic geometry. Uh, so a three manifold is like a two manifold, except up one dimension. So let me explain what a two manifold is. <laughs> so a two manifold is just something that locally looks like a piece of paper. Like for example, the surface of the earth, just the surface is a two manifold. And we used to not know what it was. So if people used to think that it went on and on maybe forever flat. And now we know that it's actually a sphere, like a balloon. That the surface of earth is like a balloon. And so a three manifold is like that. Except instead of locally looking like a piece of paper, it locally looks like just a box kind of, like a solid three-dimensional object. And we have ways of talking about all the different types of three manifolds. And one of the ways that we like to think about certain types of three manifolds is look, if they have like a cover that's just space that goes out in all direction. And we think about all the groups that can act on this. 
and have some identifications, and then downstairs would be our manifold. And so geometric group theory, from my point of view, likes to just think about the groups and what spaces they can act on and what happens in the quotient and, and start to think about just general groups this way that, that might not be the groups of manifolds. They're just interesting transformations of some space. And this is a good way to think about the algebraic aspects of the transformations and all kinds of other things that might be happening with these groups. Well, my main reason for applying was to work with um, Luisa Paluzzi and Peter Hasinski on our project, which has been great. So I wanted to be in France where I could work on the math that I was doing with the people that I was working on those projects with. So that was the main reason, is to be in Marseille for the mathematical input of Marseille. And Marseille also has a lot of other mathematicians that I've worked with before and that I know about and that I love to talk about math with. So that was the main reason. I mean, it's also nice to be in France for six months. It's nice to get a break from the usual university uh, routine. So it's great in a lot of ways. So th those were all my motivations for applying. So we did a lot of different things. Uh, one thing about this chair is that there's a lot going on. <laughs> so we organized like a big conference, uh, which was basically about the interplay between three manifold groups, so the types of groups I was trying to describe before, where it's a group such that the quotient object, when you quotient out like R3, is a three manifold, for example. Um, so we were wondering about uh, how, first of all, when can you tell if some group is a three manifold group? That's a really important question. And then also, what aspects of groups are like three manifolds? How can we like learn other things about the groups from what we already know about the theory of three manifolds and Kleinian groups? So that's basically um, what I've been thinking about, is if you have a, um, a group, so if a group has a certain type of geometry on it, which is called either hyperbolic or relatively hyperbolic, then it acts on a space that's really nice and has a boundary. So it has like, so for example, if I have the group of just the integers, and it acts on the real line, so just by the integer one, like moves it over by one, the integer two, like moves it over by two, the integer negative three, like moves it back by negative three, that action. So that's a wonderful action that helps us study the group. Although we already know a lot about the group, we can think about it. And that has a boundary and that's the two points at infinity. So other types of groups also have a similar nice action on a nice space and they have a boundary. So you can just think of this topological object that maybe the space isn't well defined, but many times the boundary is well defined. And so we look at the boundary and we say, oh, what if we just knew about the boundary but we didn't know all about the space and the action? What kind of things can we tell about the group? Like maybe we can tell it's a three manifold group. Um, maybe we can tell it's a surface group. Uh, maybe we can just tell other things about the algebraic structure of the group. Like how can this object tell us all about the group? So that was one of the main themes of the semester. So for example, the same uh, service group can have different types of boundary depending on some extra structure that we put on it. And so we're studying all the different things that can happen and what happens in this case and that case. So we really can learn a lot about the group just from looking at the boundary and, and a lot about groups just from thinking about their actions. So that was like the main content of the, of the um, big conference. And then there also was a school where we, uh, some people lectured on um, cube complexes were some type of object that the group can act on. They lectured on hyperbolic manifolds, which is sort of the connections with that. So it was like strengthening this connection between the two fields and also um, on these types of boundaries on these types of groups. So um, that was like a, a whole bunch of graduate students and postdocs came and that was very interactive and nice. And then there was a small conference where people started going in further directions. And I actually really like this. It was the least stressful for me because I was just talking about math. I wasn't organizing anything. <laughs> and so we started to go, our particular group started to think about like higher dimensional boundaries and what can happen in this case. Um, and a lot of interesting things can happen. So that was sort of like pushing things a little bit further mathematically. But we were actually like working on the research while we were here, which is a great opportunity at CERN because it's such a nice place to collaborate. So um, that was good. And then all the other times, I was um, sometimes uh, interacting with other people in France and then sometimes uh, working on my project, which was, which was nice. Yeah. 
I think um, I think it's incredibly valuable for Marseille, and I uh, wish that other cities would value how much having researchers in their city um, helps the city. Like, first of all, there's many visitors to the city, and so they come and eat in the restaurants and stay in the hotels sometimes and, and see the city. So there's that obviousness, obviously. <laughs> but the um, but also like uh, the people that come here myself included, but also many of the visitors, are interacting with a lot of the mathematicians and people that are already here. And so this is the way that like mathematical ideas get spread. So um, when I was in graduate school, I noticed I moved from one part of the country to the other, and I noticed that people in one part of the country, they thought some particular conjecture was false, and people in a different part of the country thought that that particular conjecture was, was true. <laughs> And so, and they were both kind of assuming that that's the way it was, but if they could talk to each other, then it really um, helps the, the issues that people have like come to the surface. So sometimes you can think about something for a long time, but if you're thinking about it slightly wrong, it really helps to talk to someone about it. And they could be like, oh no, we've already thought about that and this is that. And then you could say, oh, I've already thought about your issue and here's the answer to that. So it really helps the mathematics like progress quick, more quickly when people like have a chance to talk to each other and just interact a lot. And if you interact in person, it's a lot better than interacting either on Skype or on email or by letter. Like I guess mathematicians used to have to like write each other letters on hand. And so now we can email and that's great. And we can Skype, which is better. So if, if you're not understanding something by email, sometimes you Skype and you can figure it out. But in person, for some reason, there's like a lot more communication happening. So that's really the best way to um, help the mathematics progress. And so having a place like this where people can meet each other and talk in person is really essential to the field. Oh, I don't know. I was thinking I was going to try to uh, keep some of the things in my life that I started doing here. Like I started, maybe it's because this might be more the French influence than the mathematical influence. Like, I think I started to be a little bit more relaxed about things, and I want to, like, keep that in my life. And I, I started spending a lot more time eating meals, and I want to do that. <laughs> and um, I spent a lot more time just thinking about things instead of, like, rushing on to the next thing. And so, like, I had the time here to think a little bit more about things, and I'd like to continue that even when my life gets busy with a lot of stuff. But... Technically, I'm going to go back to um, my university and I'm going to continue doing research, work on, working on these same projects. We're not done yet. I started a lot of other projects when I'm here, so I'll finish all those projects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's going to be a, um, a proceedings of the semester. So I'll have other, other people will be writing the articles for that. And I have like five articles that I'm supposed to be writing, so I'll write all those. <laughs> Oh, I think it's a great, I think it's a great opportunity. I um, would hope that more people would have the opportunity to do it. So you can only have one a semester. That's really the only drawback, I think. Um, it's, uh, it's great to really focus on a particular topic for the whole time. Uh, the, yeah, I would say what could be better is if there were more people that got to do this. Oh, I love the place. I wish it had more coffee shops. So like I like to go for little hikes and go down into Kalinks, but I want to go for a little hike for like an hour or two and then there to be a little coffee shop. So that's the, <laughs> that's the only drawback. But yeah, no, it's a great place to do mathematics. And also it's nice to go, I feel like a lot of people that come here don't actually go into the city and the city is actually really wonderful and interesting and got all kinds of different people in it and um, you know, a great math department, and there's really a lot of reasons to go down to the city, although it's not super close. It's nice to see, um, to experience Marseille. It's a wonderful town.